So let's talk about perpetuities. So perpetuities are very simple. So say for example we have an annuity immediate where the payments happen at the end of each period. And instead of n payments we have infinite payments that go on forever. So what is the present value of all this? So the present value, some people will write it like this. So they will use the annuity symbol and in place of the end they'll put the infinity. So this is equal to limit n tends to infinity for the formula itself. So what is this equal to? So notice that as n tends to infinity, v to the power of n tends to 0. Because v is equal to 1 over 1 plus i. 1 plus i is larger than 1, right? So v is some, uh, is some value between 0 and 1. So it's some value between 0 and 1. And if you raise something that's between 0 and 1 to the power of infinity, you get 0. So this term here, all we're left with is 1 minus 0 divided by i, so 1 over i. And so this is the present value of our perpetuity immediate. So we can do, a, do the same thing for annuity due. So if the, uh, if the payments happen at the beginning of each period, we have, by the same logic, the same formula, except the denominator is now d. And then by the same logic, we get 1 over d. So this is the present value of a perpetuity due. So at this point, there's nothing really that challenging about uh, perpetuities. So uh, if you know what your annuity immediate and annuity due as well, this is basically just common sense. So uh, an, an interesting relationship you can establish between the two is if you consider this payment scheme. So if we have a payment scheme of, so if we have a, a perpetuity immediate, so we have all these payments that stretch on to infinity. And let's say we also have a perpetuity due. And again, this also stretch, stretches on to infinity. So notice that the value of all these payments for the annuity immediate, that's equal to 1 over i, right? As we've proved just now. And for the annuity due, all these payments are equal to 1 over d. So if I subtract 1 over i from 1 over d, we're essentially just cancelling all these payments out. So all these payments cancel each other out, except for the initial payment in the annuity due. So all we're left with, once we do the subtraction, all we're left with is the initial payment at time, time 0. So this is actually equal to 1. So uh, this is one way you can use perpetuities to establish a relationship between i and d. So this is just something interesting. Uh, this formula isn't exactly that useful, but I hope that this analysis can uh, tell you more about uh, these interests like these symbols here. So I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.